Hello, I'm Jean-Pierre Mobasser. I'm a neurosurgeon here at Goodman Campbell Brain and Spine, and today we're going to be talking about the diagnosis of spondylolisthesis. Basically, that is a fancy term that doctors use to describe when one vertebral body has slid in front of the other. So if you look at a, a model of the spine as we have here, you can see that each vertebral body is stacked on top of the other with the discs in between. There's a gentle curvature to the spine called lordosis, which we all want. That is a good thing. When you have a spondylolisthesis, there's a weakness in one of the bones in the back of the spine or the facet joints, and what's happened is instability has been created, so the vertebral body will slide over the other vertebral body. The problem is these openings where the nerves exit and where they go through the canal get smaller when the bones move out of alignment. If you think of a target, for example, everything lines up here, but if things slide, that opening gets smaller and smaller, and that's what's occurring in the spine. So as the spine slides out of alignment, the nerves get pinched. Typically, it has to do with instability, so it's a dynamic process, and what that means is when you get up and move around, the vertebral body slide out of alignment and the nerves get pinched <coughs> worse. That's why people will complain of pain more with activities and being upright than they'll complain when they're laying down in a certain comfortable position. Instability is one of the best indications for a lumbar fusion. Those are patients that tend to do very well with surgical intervention, assuming they have been through the conservative treatments and failed those treatments first. We would always start with physical therapy, trying to stabilize the core muscles and see if that stabilizes the spine and reduces the need for surgical intervention. Typically, by the time most patients get to a neurosurgeon, they have been through several of the conservative treatments and have failed those treatments. When we say failed, we mean they went through the treatment process and they either didn't help at all or they only helped temporarily and the symptoms returned. In the event that a patient has failed the conservative treatment, such as injections, physical therapy, oral medications, that's when we talk about surgery for this spinal instability. There are several different ways to do these operations. Uh, this can be done from a posterior approach, which is one of the more standard and traditional approaches, and it can be done in an open, traditional fashion or a minimally invasive fashion. Minimally invasive means that it's done in a way that there's less muscle disruption in approaching the spine to do the same procedure. You would go in posteriorly, remove the bone, unpinch the nerves, and place instrumentation in those areas to stabilize the spine and fuse that segment together. Fuse means growing bone across that segment so no more motion occurs. Another approach is to go from a lateral side of the spine and clean out the disc space from the side, put grafts into the side of the spine in between the two vertebral bodies to stabilize that unstable disc segment and then put in posterior instrumentation to supplement or support that uh, lateral approach. The same could be done from an anterior approach, which typically would require a vascular surgeon for that exposure. Which method of surgery makes the most sense depends on your individual situation and the surgeon operating on you. There are several different pros and cons for each approach, and it's very patient specific. There is not necessarily one right approach for fixing this surgically. These operations can be quite uncomfortable for the first few weeks, and then it becomes a more typical surgical pain. It is very important to be careful with activities during the healing process, which can be anywhere from six to 12 months until that bone is grown in completely. Every surgeon will have their own list of recommendations as to activities and things you should avoid during that healing process. If you have any questions about a problem like this, feel free to contact our office at any time.